Uh, hi, I'm uh, Chris McGrath. I'm a staff photographer for Getty Images. Uh, I've worked with them for 20 years covering uh, world events and news uh, for, uh, for the wire service. Uh, I'm here with my exhibition and uh, I'll take you to uh, uh, some of my photographs and tell you the stories behind them. Um, this picture here at the top uh, was taken in Istanbul outside the Saudi consulate. Uh, it was while I was covering the events surrounding the murder of uh, Washington Post journalist and Saudi uh, critic Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, the photograph became quite uh, an iconic picture for press freedom, uh, and I was fortunate that it was uh, awarded first place in the general news category of the World Press Photo last year. Uh, it uh, shows a member of the Saudi delegation uh, holding back uh, all the press who were trying to get footage of investigators going into the consulate uh, to investigate the murder. Uh, it, uh, it resonated around the world and uh, had a lot of interest uh, giving a visual aspect to press freedom issues. This photograph was taken in Thailand uh, right after the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2005. Uh, this ceremony uh, was brought together uh, uh, Buddhists who lit over 10,000 candles inside a stadium and was one of the most uh, amazing moments bringing together different religions uh, and to, to sort of uh, in the memory of the people who had been killed during the tsunami. Uh, moving on to this one. Uh, this photograph was taken in uh, the Philippines. It was after Typhoon Haiyan, um, which, although it wasn't a tsunami, was very much uh, the storm surge decimated uh, this, this area. Uh, these people were desperately trying to get food aid or get out uh, of the area. Uh, it was a very uh, sad situation seeing people in such a, a bad situation after the, uh, after the storm. This photograph is one of uh, my most recent pictures. I just came back from Beirut after the explosion. And uh, this was uh, covering a funeral for three firefighters who were the very first responders inside the port. Um, and their whole crew uh, was killed. Uh, these three members were all related, a uh, cousin and... Uh, uh, family members. So this funeral was one of the most amazing uh, funerals I've ever been to. It went for hours and the, the whole town came out. It was such an emotional uh, experience for everybody that lived there. These guys were really truly uh, loved and, and were thought of as heroes and it was just a, an amazing spectacle to see them take the coffins through the, the whole town until they, they got to the, uh, to the church. Uh, you see the family members. It was a, a very moving moment uh, and a, a great tribute to them. Uh, I took this photograph during my coverage of the Hong Kong uh, protest last year. I spent uh, many months there uh, documenting what was happening and the changing situation. This night it was very late uh, and it came at a time when uh, the Hong Kong police had really stepped up uh, their violence towards the protesters. So the photograph really shows here a protester being beaten with a baton. It was the same night that police drew a, a gun for the first time on protesters. So uh, this was a real escalation in the protests at this time. This photograph was taken uh, while I was covering the, the final battle against ISIS in uh, Mosul in Iraq. Uh, this shows uh, fire crews uh, coming to uh, extinguish oil blazes. Uh, when ISIS was pushed from this area, uh, they, they lit the oil fields. So the whole place was covered in a dark cloud. Everything was burning. Uh, and these guys were working tirelessly to try to put out the, the wells. Uh, I think this was nearly two months after ISIS had left. So this photograph was taken during the, the Rio Olympics. Uh, I was there covering uh, surrounding stories and the news, not actually the sport. Uh, so this was taken in a favela, and I did a whole series of pictures of people watching the Olympic Games or people who were not uh, a, a part of the Olympic Games. So here it shows a young, young boy in a hairdressing salon, and they have the Olympic Games uh, above him. It was one of those photographs that showed a different side to how the Olympics affects uh, a community in a city. This photograph was again taken recently uh, as after, in the aftermath of the Beirut explosion. Uh, this, the, the man in the photograph, Ray, he's uh, an artist and I stumbled upon him uh, one afternoon while I was walking around and he said, I'm shooting a music video uh, in one of the, the damaged buildings and he had set up a, a grand piano uh, in this building and was shooting a video of a song that he had made months and months before the explosion but he, he realised that the song 
uh, was something that could uplift the people after the explosion. So he decided to make a music video, put it out on social media. Uh, so this wall shows uh, the work that I've just completed on uh, the coronavirus, uh, something that's affected everybody in the world and uh, uh, affected me as well. Uh, I uh, not only lived through the same thing, but I had to work. Uh, so this is sort of six months' worth of work covering Turkey. Uh, I, as everybody, I couldn't travel, so I was focused on the situation in Turkey. Um, it was a very difficult and busy time. I worked every single day. Um, to, to try to cover off the whole story from uh, every changing point from the beginning of the virus to uh, coming into the new normal and how, how life is affecting us now. These two photographs were what started out as uh, the precautions to uh, COVID. So this first picture was right before a lockdown. People was not, they were told to stay at home and it, it just became this sort of representative photograph, the wind in her hair and sort of this dramatic sort of chaos, uh, unease that was about to, to come over the city with the first lockdown. Um, the, this photograph at the same time was the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul. Uh, it's one of the biggest covered uh, markets in the world and it's a hustle and bustle and we were allowed in for their disinfection and it was one of the most eerie scenes to go into this uh, labyrinth of shops that were closed in the darkness of night with these guys uh, dressed like this and going through the market. And it was just one of those scenes as a photographer that I know I will never ever see again. Uh, and it really set home what Corona was doing to, to the world and how we were seeing these scenes that were, were movie-like. So this picture was taken, uh, I spent one month on, a, on the MOAS rescue boat in the central Mediterranean uh, covering uh, migrants and refugees trying to cross to, to Italy. Uh, this was actually one of my, the first rescues that I did and it was a group of migrants waiting to, to come on board. Uh, it was very long days on the boat uh, and some scenes we had uh, various rescues where there were many, many deaths and drownings from overturned boats uh, and uh, it was you know seeing uh, babies and children disappearing and drowning uh, losing uh, contact with their parents in the water and and then turning up uh, uh, drowned it was uh, a very difficult time to photograph and a very important story that is continuing today uh, the one up the top here is uh, in uh, a hospital in Gaza and uh, this was during a story I did on the electricity issues going on there. And these babies are there because uh, they have some problems and many of the children are dying due to the fact that the electricity continues to go out. And when they need life support, uh, the, the machines go out and uh, they, they pass away. So it's, uh, it was a very difficult situation. So this photograph was taken when I spent uh, a week with the first responder ambulance in Turkey. And when we talk about medical workers being on the front line, these were the guys directly going into quarantine houses uh, whenever a call came in. They were doing sometimes up to 40 a day in some of these neighborhoods during the peak time, uh, really putting themselves at risk and really like getting into the, to these houses and, and helping these people. Uh, they were real heroes, uh, uh, wonderful to work with. They have to change their protective gear every single time. So if you're doing 40 calls a day there, stripping off, changing, going to the next one, getting a phone call, going again, they really work 24 hours nonstop. Uh, and it really shows what Corona was doing uh, when people say it's not so bad. These guys can sell you something different. Uh, this photograph uh, was a wonderful story, a very uplifting story. Uh, the lady, Ibru, on the left here, she uh, was pregnant when she came down with coronavirus and she ended up spending 33 days in the hospital um, and they uh, did a c-section and she she gave birth and they were very worried about whether or not she would recover this was the day that she was cleared to go home and arrived home to her family her husband nobody had seen the baby no one was allowed to touch the baby um, so it was this amazing moment where the parents got to see her again for the first time because she was also in hospital and none of her family members could see her. I spent uh, a week with them and have 
photographs this story about him meeting her for the first time and the baby. It's, it's a really wonderful story. I was not allowed to go into the house. His pictures are taken from the outside of the door as they arrive, and then I had to leave because they were still concerned about my safety and going into the house. This top photograph is taken uh, during the aftermath of the tsunami that uh, hit Japan after the 9.0 magnitude earthquake. Uh, this for me was a very difficult uh, assignment to cover. Uh, I was, uh, it was very difficult to get in because of the destruction around uh, the airports in Tokyo. We ended up flying to another airport, and when we arrived, uh, one of the last flights to get in there, we <laughs> managed to rent the last car and began to work. Uh, that day, we were driving towards Fukushima, uh, the, power, the nuclear power plant that uh, was damaged, when there was uh, a red alert for it to, uh, to basically uh, explode. So halfway down, we were, we were told to turn around and, and, and get out of there. So... Uh, my very first day there, I didn't take any photographs. We, we went and stayed in a hotel, and there were continual aftershocks, very large aftershocks, uh, when we were staying in that hotel. Um, afterwards, we, we decided to go to Fukushima anyway. Um, as a journalist, I, I had an argument saying that we should you know, cover this no matter what. So uh, we ended up going, and this was in Kesenuma, uh, a man here where his house used to stand uh, in one of the most uh, damaged areas. Uh, fire uh, took over this area because of the oil that was at this port. Um, and it was a, a very uh, amazing scene to see him digging through, looking for anything that was left from, from his house. <laughs>